You're with Newsmakers on the panel, Roger Sutton, Andrew Holden and Jenny Morton. What is shaping up to be a mega budget next month is likely to confirm a wave of changes to how we fund tertiary facilities and tertiary students. Limiting access to student loans to a set number of years is on the cards. Should you be able to borrow uh, on your student loan for seven, eight, nine, ten years to complete your undergraduate degree? No. So the changes. No, I mean, it's all, it's all. Yes, it is necessary. It's all getting a bit out of control, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And I think an honest government would be much more likely to actually stop making it um, interest-free and so on. And they'll do some more innovative things in terms of if you stay on in the country, you pay a lower rate of interest when you graduate. They do some more things around that sort of stuff, but. Yeah, it's just crazy. You can hang around at university year after year failing things and continue to get a big loan, which is, it's not, it's, well, it's, they call it a loan. Mm. It's essentially a grant it's so generous. So I'm, 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 I'm happy, yeah. Is it time for change in the tertiary sector? I think so. It, it, it's the reality that, you know, the days of the 70s, free tertiary education for everybody and, you know, and relatively easy to get in, they're long gone. And I think it's one of the realities that says that, you know, if you're failing at the end of the first year, that's it, you're done. And they're going to be a lot tougher. It doesn't surprise me at all. Mm. Jenny, your thoughts? Um, I also, I don't think it's also necessarily about pass and fail. I have a belief that, yeah, we have the joy of learning and people should get the opportunity to have a tertiary education. But at the end of the day, you go to university, surely, to get a degree or a qualification that allows you to go out in the real world and contribute to New Zealand's economy. So I don't necessarily think that people should be doing three degrees year after year after year at university and, and becoming professional students and being able to get a student loan to fund that lifestyle choice. Right. And I'm sorry, I think that is a lifestyle choice, that you choose to be a professional student mm. and incur debt that you may never have to pay back because you're still studying. Mm. So I think it should be, you can have a, a student debt for, that will fund so many years study. It's interesting, Andrew, that Rod Carr seems to have been at the forefront of a lot of the changes to entry to university that the government are keen to pick up on and roll out nationwide. Has that been your impression? Uh, it would be, although I'm sure there'll be others um, who are playing, being key players in that. I wonder what around Steve Mahara's contribution as well. I suspect right. he's a very, very influential figure in terms of the policies. Yeah. One thing I have a major bugbear about, if I can share with you uh, candidly, is the proliferation of these low quality junk tertiary courses. Media studies is a case in point. There are media studies courses available from every polytech and private institution you can imagine in the land. Similarly, tourism studies has become a complete dog's breakfast. They need a clean out, surely, don't they? Oh, absolutely. I think there's now four or five places where you can study engineering in New Zealand. There used to be only two. Right. Yeah. I, think, I think there are real economies of scale having fewer places that do it well. Yeah. Jenny, low yeah. quality, got to go? I, I agree entirely because also I, I remember meeting a young woman once who'd gone to do one of these tourism courses and she'd been promised that do our qualification you'll have no trouble getting a job at the end of it you know we place Learn all our students really effectively oh, yeah you know you you well, we place our students in jobs and she came out mm. at the end of it and I met her because she was uh, doing temporary house cleaning for one of the services providing help to my mother on ACC you know, the, mm. these, these qualifications should lead people to get jobs, not just have a nice letter after their name. Do you come um, personally uh, face to face with this at the press, with people who have been promised the world via a media studies course or a journalism studies course? Oh, generally they need to do a postgrad um, diploma in journalism really to be in the game. If they've just done media and communications, it's very tough for them. Yeah. It's interesting, isn't it? Because the game's changed so dramatically that you almost don't interview anybody if they haven't got uh, a qualification. Mm -hmm. um, I've never been to university, never went to university. I have no degrees or anything. Uh, the time that I started in the, in the business of journalism was very much about getting a cadetship and getting direct work experience. And, and that meant you had to go wherever you could get that. Now, arguably, if we're going to scrap a lot of these education programs, though, what's the obligation on business to open its doors to people with not a lot more than secondary school education and give them that chance. Mm. This is interesting because in my industry, of course, we're having the new code that's coming through that says we do have to be qualified. And I similarly am not university qualified and I've done my job for 20 years and consider that I have a, a reasonable amount of experience that allows me to do it well. Um, and in our industry, you're getting to the point where they're actually making it retrospective. So all of these people who have done this job for 30 or 40 years and have a wealth of experience mm. could be pushed out if they're not willing to go and get a qualification 
in their hmm. 60s. Yeah. And that seems equally wrong. Yes. Just before we go to the break, a quickie on uh, this great paralysis that has gripped uh, European airspace for six long days. Of course, uh, the logistical nightmare remains for many airlines, but the backlog is starting to be cleared. Um, and of course, this was a volcano that no one in the world could actually pronounce. Uh, why did it take so long for the flights to get back in the air? There does seem to be a lot of angst on the part of the airlines that the, um, the Brussels Regulated. brigade were just far too overcautious. Do you think they were in hindsight, or did they need to be? How do you see it? I'm not sure they had a plan. Mm. Did they have a plan of what they'd do in this situation? Do they have the lineup of scientists? Do they have a... This is, this is the test we'll actually conduct, and if they pass, you know, the air and the sky passes this test, they'll fly. If it doesn't, we won't. Mm. I'd be interested to know, has New Zealand got a proper plan for this? And I'm not <laughs> sure the media have yet asked that question. Have we got a really good plan? What are the tests we're going to conduct? You know, how risk averse are we going to be? I think it'd be really good for the media to actually ask those questions. <laughs> <laughs> Mr Holden. Uh, thank you, Roger. You've prepared our news list for Monday. I appreciate that. My pleasure. Uh, I think we just fly wide, don't we? We just go around, <laughs> actually, or, or ignore Auckland, which would be marvellous. Yeah. Um, it, an astonishing result, but then who would be who would want to get on the first plane mm. without a complete assurance of the safety mm. to find out whether it was a good idea to get on that plane or not? Mm. I mean, I, in some respects, you can't blame the authorities for being super cautious because who'd want to be responsible for the first 350 people to crash? Yeah. But it's, I think it's also sort of about just how unprepared we are for Mother Nature. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we just, you know, when the phones go out of Ryan, when there's a power outage, more than three quarters of the calls are people ringing on cell phones because they don't have a landline at home that mm. works. Mm. You know, they, you tell them to listen to the radio, I don't have a transistor radio. <laughs> We're well, just so unprepared if there's one thing people should take out of this. Is, Get prepared, just get some basics, because eh? otherwise, when Mother Nature turns, you know, we're yep. all going to be up. <laughs> yes. yeah. All right, uh, we'll take a break. I'll let Jenny lead away on the white poppy issue shortly, and we'll have a look at uh, who deserves a plug and a poke from the week as well. Do stay with us.